work at the University of Louisville where I'm an archivist and community relations specialist. So I do Louisville history in 10 different formats. Um, worked in the archives half time. The other half of my university commitment is to do radio and television and talks and walks and tours of neighborhoods and the community. I also do some writing of Louisville history and that's my day job. Somewhere between about 6.40 a.m. and 10.30 p.m., I'm also a member of the Metro Council. We are uh, increasingly, I think, understanding how important it is from an identity standpoint and a pride standpoint and a security standpoint and from a story standpoint. If I can help at all, it will be underlining with you the importance of story, regardless of what neighborhood you're from. I was blessed at a very early age with a simple notion that I still fervently believe more now than ever before. And that simple notion is to, for a neighborhood to be important, George Washington didn't need to sleep there. <laughs> for a neighborhood to be important, it needs to have citizens in it that have a sense of pride and belonging and that believe that there is strength in numbers and strength in identity and strength in story and that's what makes any, every neighborhood important. It is just that simple. If that is uh, the Ohio River that's kind of running in some kind of serpentine fashion coming from the corner of the room up there, uh, somewhere right over here in the upper left-hand corner of this map of Louisville and Jefferson County, the Ohio swoops down towards you briefly and then it climbs back up and then it makes a 90 degree turn. What I just said, what I just said is that if anybody from Des Moines or from Tuscaloosa coming to see you, ask you if you're in Jefferson County where the Ohio River is, the answer is, it's there. <laughs> Both there and there. Because this 981 mile length of the nation's second fullest <laughs> river, that river, 981 mile length, does something in the upper left hand corner of this map that it does nowhere else. And it's a 981 mile length. Here and nowhere else, it drops 26 and a half feet as it cascades, as it bubbles, fizzles, and fumes through white water rapids, through giant earth birthday cake layers of limestone. It crashes, it bangs, and it fumes. But as it's doing all of that, it's dropping 26 and a half feet, and it's making a 90 degree turn. Or to say it another way, if I'm in the Shawnee neighborhood at the end of Broadway, sitting in a rowboat, the bell of Louisville is 26 and a half feet above me sitting at the historic wharf at the end of 4th Street at the falls, just above the falls of the Ohio. Other fundamental elements of geography in the community. And regardless of whether you've got a name or you don't have a name, there are all kinds of naming curiosities. That kind of element of story involved in the naming talks about history, and the land and place and it is in that sense of place where pride is built. Smoke Town comes to mind for instance. We used to think Smoke Town was a term for racial derision that is making fun of African Americans because we know that since the Civil War there was subdivision where blacks owned homes or rented homes in that area east of Preston Street and south of Broadway, for instance. But now we're knowing, we think, we know that the reason Smoketown got its name has less, less to do with race 
and much, much more to the forested land that once was there. And in that forested land, the making of charcoal, coke, of charcoal for the burning of fires in homes and the heating of things in kitchens, that charcoal was made by felling those giant trees and by piling mud on top of them and building an air hole in the top and an air hole in the bottom and setting the trees on fire so that they could slow burn or char to become charcoal. And so Smoketown was a smoky place. Oh, okay. And so the name is part of the story. Anybody know Commandant General Hale Avenue in West Louisville? You know West Louisville? You know what it was formerly called? Count Otto von Bismarck. <laughs> we decided to name it after the Commandant at Camp Zachary Taylor. You know we had a significant light rail system privately owned, built overnight between 1900 and 1910, with lines going to south from downtown to southwest at Old Rail Valley Station, with a line going to um, the out Bardstown Road to Fern Creek, a line that branched off at uh, Taylorsville Road to Jefferson Town, a line that went to Oxmoor Shopping Center, which wasn't there at the time, and one branch went all the way to LaGrange, and another branch went to Shelbyville. This light rail system called the Interurban. Well, the Preston Highway Interurban Line dead ended there at Robb's Lane. Read that, the outer loop going east. <laughs> that's old, that's uh, modern. Uh, Rob's Lane. Well, it dead ended just beyond, um, just beyond um, um, uh, the outer loop toward Blue Lick Road. That's where it dead ended. And that was a little feed and seed community. It had a name, but it was not much of a name. It was kind of struggling, just a feed. But once the light rail line came, they needed a better name. And so they said, well, let's name it after the big oak tree that's over there on Markwell Lane. You know, standing by itself, let's name it Lone Oak. And so they got the post office to name their little town at the end of the inner urban Lone Oak. Oh, sorry, Lone Oak's already taken. It's down in McCracken County. <laughs> what we're going to do? <laughs> Just turn it around. Call it Oklahoma. Is that good enough? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.